This is Ryan Elliott for Boxing Social in association with Betfred. We're in London. We just concluded the draw ahead of Ultimate Boxer 6 on December 13th. With me in the tournament, Mark Bad News Bennett. Mark, first and foremost, how are you? I'm good, thank you, mate. Yeah, really good. Excellent. Uh, as mentioned, we just had the draw. You're going to be facing Jay McFarlane in the quarterfinals of Ultimate Boxer 6 up in Manchester. Talk to me about that draw. What do you know about Jay and what do you expect from the fight as well? I mean, I, mean I, I don't really know much about Jay himself as a, as a fighter. Um, he seems a nice kid. I've only met him a couple of times. But, um, yeah, I'm ready, mate. I know he's going to bring his A game. Everyone here is going to bring their A game. Not, the, everyone here is, is here to fight and they're here to win it. But um, I, I believe, I'm confident with that draw, mate. I think it's a good draw for myself. And I think that the next round, going on to the next round, is a, a good round as well. I think that... Um, I, th I, I believe that I can win this. I believe I can win this tournament. Today. That golden robe's mine. Now, because the the British heavyweight division isn't the deepest, interestingly, uh, a lot of the people up here have fought each other at some point. You fought and beat two of the guys here as a professional. Do you take any sort of advantage from that, or is that all out the window going into a format like this? Um, I think that this formats. This, it, I mean, I fought Sokolowski and I fought Healy over four rounds. Um, so I think a three-round fight is the same sort of process as a four-round. Really, you're in it. To, you're in it, and you're. Um, and it's just. It's just. A, it's a quick. It's a quick draw. Um, and I believe that I, I'm not going to take much away from it, mate. Now I believe I'm confident because I've already beat them, um, and, and I've, I've got the beating on them too. So, but yeah, it's it's a good. It's it's a good tournament. It suits me. I'm fit for three rounds, and I'll be. And I, once rested, I'll be fit for another three rounds. And then once rested, I'll be fit for another three rounds. I'm an athletic guy, mate, and I'm, I'm, I'll be fit. I found it interesting, you were citing the fitness a lot up there, obviously military background, always kept yourself in very good shape. Do you think that could play, in fact, more of a part than boxing ability, perhaps, given that when you come out the back of a three-rounder, you've got to be ready and you've got to be able to go again to win this tournament? I think fitness, and you mentioned heart as well, how big a part of fitness and heart playing this for you? Oh, massively, mate. I mean, my, my, life, um, my, my life story, it's all... It's all mental, it's all heart, it's all strength, it's fitness. Everything, it just all builds into one package. And I think that, I think that it, on top now, where I'm at now, this, it, it, it's, it 100% adds to it all as a, as a unit. And um, yeah, I, I believe that Afghan, I believe that joining the army at 16 has made me the better man that I am today. And, and yeah, massively, mate, yeah. I was going to ask you to tell us a bit more about that. We've heard everyone's stories today, some of them quite extraordinary. You went in the military at 16, went to Afghanistan. When you came out, you took up boxing fairly late as a, as a career choice. Could you just talk to me about your journeys since that sort of early adulthood, going straight into the military at such a young age? Yeah, I mean, I, I, leaving school after I had my GCSEs, I joined the army. I, um, I, well, like I say, 2004, I joined the army. And then in 2000, I lost, me, I lost my dad while I was in the army, he passed away. And then I went to uh, Afghanistan in 2008 for a Christmas tour. 2009 I got back, my, my first daughter, my first child was born, I was 21. Um, then I, when I got medically discharged from the army at 23, my second daughter was born straight away. I, I think it was like three days after being discharged. Um, then st working away throughout my adulthood to work. Uh, to provide for my family, mate. Provide. I was playing rugby, uh, rugby union for for years since a boy, mate. And then uh, I, I was playing semi-professional rugby union at Otley for a couple of seasons. I pushed on through that. Um, once leaving the army, I mean, I represented the army under 23s, army com uh, combined service 23s um, at rugby. And then leaving that, um, leaving leaving the rugby. Once I left the army, I had to give it up. So I had to provide for family. Then I got married, um, and then my son was born after that. And, that, and then six weeks later, me six weeks earlier, I've just had another son. Um, he was spent two weeks in a neonatal unit, and um, and uh, he's but he's home now, fighting fit. So we're good, mate. Yeah, we're good. Everything's complete, and it's a long, <laughs> long process. You, as a lot of people up here as well, have in common are providing for a family, as you've mentioned. How has fatherhood changed your approach to sort of your career and how does it sort of, you know, add to your mentality as well? Does it give you that bit more desire to succeed? I mean, I, yeah, I, failure is one of my, uh, losing is one of my biggest fears, mate. I've not lost, I've not lost a fight since 
being unlicensed to professional. Um, it's, a, it's a big fear of mine. But So I give everything I can, mate, and I'm confident stepping into the ring. And, um, and once I'm in that ring, I dig deep. And, and that's, that's one thing I've got over these lads, like I said, mate. I, I, I know I, when I've got to dig deep, I know I can dig deep. And, um, and that's, that's through my, uh, la through my life. My life. I've, I've had to do that. Um, but being a father has is, is changed. It's ch nothing really to do with my boxing career, mate, because I was a father when I started boxing. Uh, my wife had just had me, uh, my first son. So I've always been a dad like throughout the boxing career. I've only been boxing four years, and to be stood here after four years, I think it's a big achievement for myself, and I'm, I'm proud, mate. I'm proud to be stood here. And, I, and when I take that golden robe home, I'll be even prouder, man. What a win do for not only your career, but your life as well, to, to win this tournament, to claim that golden robe. Oh, massive, mate. It'll, uh, obviously, it'll give me and my family a good Christmas and a good start to the new year. And then it'll put me in good stead for, uh, hopefully, an English title fight, mate. Um, possibly. Even, um, I mean, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what's on the table. I mean, I've been mandatory for Central Area, but I think, I think winning this pushes me past the Central. And, um, and yeah, yeah, we'll see where we go from there. Mark, final thing before I let you go, since you're all heavyweights, I'm asking you all about the huge rematch we've got in Saudi Arabia next weekend. Andy Ruiz, Anthony Joshua, Unified Heavyweight Championship on the line. Repeat or revenge, how do you see it playing out next weekend? Um, I think I, I think AJ's trimmed down a lot, mate, and he's, uh, he's looking sharp and he's looking fit. But you can't argue with Ruiz's hooks, mate. I think if Ruiz clips AJ around, it's heavyweight boxing at the end of the day. If Ruiz throws them bombs, mate, and AJ, I think... Um, I think it's going to be a good tear up, but I, I, um, I, th I hope AJ nicks it, mate. I hope AJ nicks it, but I can't see it with uh, Ruiz, with the way he's looking. He's looking good as well. He's in good, better shape than the first fight. So it's going to be a good fight. Hey, Mark, thank you very much. Speaking of Boxing Social, best of luck. We'll see